Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video I'm going to explain how we help children become really good at finding fractions of amounts so that they deeply understand what they're doing, will always understand it in the future and can fluently complete fractions of amounts problems. I'm going to explain the three different structures that we use to support children's thinking as they come to understand what they're doing so that you can select the one or two that are right for your child. And then I'll also explore the abstract method for finding fractions of amounts. If you don't need this video, here's your fast forward link to the next video, which is on the foundations of decimals. This video definitely builds on the ideas we developed in the video on the foundations of fractions. So if you haven't seen that one, here's a link to it now. OK, let's get going. To deeply understand what they're doing when they're finding fractions of amounts, children need to have a picture either in front of them, in apparatus or visually, or in their imagination that they're using to support their thinking. And there are three types of picture we can use. The first is a circular picture of fractions. And as ever, I'm using pizzas. Pizzas are the only resource I can get that really works well. If you know of others, please tell me about them in the comments. But pizzas are fun. So, if we were looking at a problem like finding three quarters of 20 objects, you could have your pizza pieces on the table in front of you and get 20 counters or objects and put them so they're shared fairly between the quarters. And then we want three of those quarters. So you move one slice away and count how many quarters are there. Let's just notate that. So what I'm suggesting is if we were doing three quarters of 20, we would have our pizza like this. and we'd deal out our objects and then we'd want three quarters of them so we maybe wouldn't want this quarter here and we'd see that it's 15 objects. Circular fractions are a great way to get going with this subject. If you just draw the circle that represents the type of fraction you're working with, share out the objects or quantities fairly between the sections and take the number of sections you want to find your answer. It always works. But sometimes the circles can be pretty tricky to draw, especially if you're working with sevenths or something like that, that you don't have pizza parts for. So circles have their limitations, but they're a nice introduction. So circles are your first model you can choose from. Let's look at a problem like find three sevenths of 21. that we're going to struggle to do with circles. Now, it's very easy just to draw sevenths by drawing seven boxes next to each other to represent something cut into sevenths. That's much easier than drawing something and cut, trying to cut it into seven equal parts. So this is our whole amount. This is the 21. And we're going to share the 21 fairly. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and we want three sevenths. That's this much here. So we can count up that our answer is nine. You need to take a little time to establish that your child is correctly seeing the whole and understanding what the whole is here slightly more tricky than with the pizzas where the hole is always one whole circle and is easier to see. But for most children this works well and it's so easy to do and they can draw these diagrams for themselves. So this is a kind of bar model and this is your second representation that can support thinking about fractions of amounts. The third model is array. That's organising objects as rectangles. So let's think about the same problem three sevenths of 21. What we do is count out seven objects and organize them as a line. Your next seven go above them. Six, seven, 
and finally top row until all 21 are used up and then our answer well we have our sevenths here in columns and we just take three of them to find our answer so our answer is nine this is very similar to what we've just done the only difference is that we're formally organizing objects in columns and I like it because it's kind of elegant because it connects to all other multiplication and division and I've got a worksheet coming soon on the first steps of finding fractions of amounts which uses this structure if you'd like it all my worksheets are available for free download just follow the links in the description of my YouTube channel or go to my Facebook group which is expert primary maths teaching and look in the files section and the best thing to do to find a worksheet is always to search by the title of the video that you're looking for the worksheet for as you work with your child on finding fractions of amounts with structure you can gradually draw their attention to the reality that you need to take your amount and share it fairly into this many parts the number of parts in the denominator of the fraction and then multiply that result by the numerator of the fraction to take the number of parts that you want and classroom teaching can quite quickly move on to a question like find two thirds of 417, 417. And it's quite common for children simply to be taught to divide the amount by the denominator of the fraction and then multiply by the numerator. And they can learn to do that without developing any understanding of why they're doing it. And that's really bad maths teaching because they won't remember it'll just be yet another spell or recipe for producing results that's meaningless that they'll forget but if you've worked on the structures of fractions and you've worked on what we're talking about here and you've worked on the structures of division then you're going to be okay so here your visual structure we use this one then you can understand we need to share that fairly into three equal parts and here we identify one of the problems children struggle with with division. Some children think division is counting groups. How many threes in 407? And if they only see that structure of division, it's going to get in the way of them knowing what to do here. They need to know that division is sharing fairly. So if we divide like that, we're going to share 417 into three equal parts and we're going to be able to put one part in each section here so 400s if we share them fairly between three people each person gets one 100 and there's one left over that we need to break into tens so that gives us 11 tens all together with 11 tens we can give each of our three people three tens we've got two tens left over so that leaves us with 27 ones and 27 ones, when we share them fairly between three people, is nine. So we've got 139 in each section. And you can multiply the 139 by two. Most children, if they deeply understand what's going on, they'll probably choose to add. And when they swap in that way, it really does show deep understanding. 9 and 9 is 18, we get a 10. So we've got 6 tens plus the 1 from the 1, so that's 7 tens altogether. 278 is our answer. And if you wanted to, you could use a pizza cut into thirds and be Dean's apparatus to actually physically break that into the thirds and show that you want two of them and put the Dean's apparatus or the, any other base 10 apparatus back together to show your answer. Teaching right up, way up into secondary school, I still get children to draw these blocks so that I can prove to myself as a teacher that they all deeply understand what they're doing. Maybe not all the time, but at least some of the time that I'm working with them, so I've seen them all do it. It is great to have children who are about nine years old working through lots of questions like these. It's really good practice for their short multiplication and their short division. If you remember when I did those videos, we talked about focusing on one number to multiply or divide by at a time. 
here we're going to get them all mixed together and it's good to have that practice and review of those topics just so long as they deeply understand what they're doing. So it's really important to do quite a bit of work with small numbers where children can move apparatus and picture what they're doing and only to move on to harder questions if you're confident your child that you're working with deeply understands exactly what's going on and can visualise what they're doing. Okay, one more tip that's great for home teaching. It's a really good idea to set up some fractions of amounts problems that are to do with quantities such as volumes of liquid, lengths, weights, and get children estimating the answers to those problems. If you're doing something with dough or play-doh, can they find two-fifths of the play-doh by playing around with separating it into five equal parts and taking two of them? They don't have to be particularly accurate in any of this, but when you set them these challenges, you can really see their thinking and interact with it in such a powerful way. And they're trying to translate the models you've taught them into different contexts. And if they can do that for themselves, they've really got this topic sussed. So in terms of practice, there will be a worksheet shortly on fractions of amounts, but it'll just be on very simple fractions of amounts using the array model. If you want to set up your own questions, you can. Just make sure that if they involve large numbers, at this stage, the large number that you're finding a fraction of should divide by the denominator of the fraction. Otherwise, you're making it a bit hard for this stage. So your takeaways from this video is that when children learn to find fractions of amounts, they must always be visualising either fractions of circles, fractions as bars cut into chunks, or arrays. You need to start teaching them so they get that first before moving on to harder problems only when you are absolutely sure that they will always continue to visualise what's going on as they move on to those harder problems. And it's a great idea to explore concepts of fractions of amounts in terms of length, capacity, weight, amount of play-doh, amounts of liquid or anything like that. Don't worry about having perfect answers, just check that your child is trying to split the quantity into the right number of parts and take a sensible number of parts in their imagination as they wrestle with the problem. I hope you enjoy working with your child on finding fractions of amounts. Please tell me how you get on. Leave a comment, I'd love to know, especially if you've got any problems. Or you can come and ask me on my live streams. Please subscribe and click on the bell so that you can find this YouTube channel again. And I hope you'll join me for the next video, which is going to be on the foundations of decimals. Bye for now.